What's up? Welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's video, we're gonna be doing my signature foilage technique with a twist, so stay tuned. excited to be sharing with you guys this new twist to my signature foliage technique. So my model today has about a level five hair and she's got some brightness already on her end. So we're going to be refreshing her hair, brightening her up, adding a stronger money piece in the front. And I'm going to be sharing with you guys a new secret sauce that I found for my blending agent and it's not lightweight conditioner. So stay tuned to find out exactly what it is. All right. So this is our starting canvas. You guys can see she's got definitely some lightness in there, some good dimension already but she definitely still has a lot of depth especially through this back section here so we're gonna be brightening her up bringing all of this up it's been six months since she's gotten her hair color done so we're gonna be brightening her up giving her a lot more brightness um, breaking through kind of this dark hole area and just really giving her some really fun beautiful color for summer and one last thing that I want to make mention is she definitely has a lot of depth underneath her hair like I showed you. So you guys can see all through here that sometimes a client might not feel super blonde because they're kind of dark through here. So we're going to show you guys how to brighten up this area, give it lots and lots of depth, and make sure that this area doesn't feel too dark to your clients. All right, so I am going to be mixing up her lightener and I actually love using this double-sided bowl because it allows me to do two formulas. So I'm actually gonna be doing just a 10 volume with Olaplex just for those lighter ends. I just wanna brighten them up a little bit, but not too much. And then I'm also gonna be doing a 30 volume to start with. We'll probably bump it up to 35 for some of those darker pieces, but uh, we'll start with 30. So I'm just gonna mix that up here. And of course I'm always gonna put in some Olaplex and then I'm gonna share with you guys something fun and new that I'm gonna try. All right, so previously in the past, I have used a lightweight conditioner for my blending agent, but we're actually gonna be using the Biolage Raw Color Care Aesthetic Milk Rinse. And so I'm going to put this into a bowl here, just kind of squirt a decent amount in there. And this is going to be used as my blending agent for our foils. I'm gonna show you guys a really fun technique with using this, but I am really excited to show it to you. All right, so I'm gonna section her hair to start just the front from the back. So I'm just literally going to take a section just right behind her ear here. And I don't do super crazy sectioning. I just barely kind of clip it out of the way. So we're just gonna clip that out of the way. And we're gonna start here in the back section. And like I showed you guys, she's got a lot of depth underneath here. So when she wears her hair up, there's so much darkness. And a lot of times clients, when they pull their hair forward, they wanna see this brightness in here. So we definitely are gonna to wanna to brighten this up. So when she wears her hair back, she gets that nice, beautiful balayage look. So we're gonna start here. She's got a really nice square hairline. So I'm actually gonna do a diagonal back section just like this. And we're gonna start right there. So let me just clip this away. All right, so we're gonna take our section right here and I'm going to weave it out. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna end up leaving this piece out because I want this to be our natural low light. If I took the entire section and did it, what would happen is she'd have a really blonde chunk right there, so we don't want that. So I'm going to tease this section right here, just ever so slightly. And I like to start my teasing kind of just mid-shaft up. And we're gonna do that right there. And then I'm going to take my foil right here. And this is where that blending agent comes in. So I'm taking my blending agent just right here and applying it right below where I did my teasing. So you guys can see the teasings there. We got the blending agent. And then I'm gonna go in with my 30 volume because this is the much darker section here and start just applying it through the length of her hair. Now you wanna make sure that you're really saturating this hair, getting it fully, fully in there. And then I'm just gonna go through and just kind of blend this up into that blending agent that we did. So just kind of slightly feather it up in there. One thing you do wanna make sure of is you're not going all the way up into the teasing area because then that could cause bleed marks. So I'm just kind of going right where that blending agent is. And then all I'm gonna do is I'm going to take another foil, place it right on top, and then that is going to incubate this entire section. Fold this up, and then lock it down into place. Now I'm gonna go to my next section. So you guys can see this was the piece right around her hairline. Now I'm gonna just kind of slightly vary my angle and go a little bit closer towards that bottom corner of the nape of her neck. So we're just gonna take this 
And I wanna make sure that I'm doing this to get all of that brightness in there. You guys can see how much darkness she has through here. A lot of her lightness was through the top layer of her hair. So we wanna make sure that we're grabbing all of this and definitely getting some brightness in here. All right, so I'm going to, again, do this. And this is a little bit wider of a section, so we will leave just a little bit more out. We don't want, again, have her be an ombre type of look. She does have a lot of brightness already. So we're just kind of enhancing that and bringing it in. So again, we're gonna tease this up and grab our longer foil. Now, I love these foils. If you guys have not used these foils yet, they are amazing. They're from Framar. And of course, they're my favorite color, the rose gold color. And I absolutely love them because you can tear them to the length that you want them to be. So this is great, especially for clients like her who have this insanely long, thick hair. It's really hard to bunch that up into short foils. So Framar makes them in this nice, beautiful, long roll. And then I can just paint however I need to. Now she has a little bit of lightness down here at the end. So what I'm gonna do is I have saturated it with 30 volume, but I'm gonna go through back with our 10 volume and just kind of re-lighten some of those ends down here. So it almost created like a 20 volume down here at these little bit lighter ends because she definitely has some depth in there, but I don't want it to be full 30 volume for the whole time of processing. So just to ensure that her ends stay healthy. Um, of course we did use Olaplex, but make sure that we put a little bit of lightness in there too. So now I'm just going back through and again, just kind of blending this back up into our blending agent. That, that acidic milk rinse is gonna be so, so amazing. And I'll, I'll kind of explain a little bit more as to why I use it as we go through this process. But um, for now, you guys can see I'm just feathering it up in there. And one other thing that I do like to do sometimes is, you can see how maybe this might be a little bit solid. So I'll take a clean, dry brush and I'm just gonna drag this down right here and just kind of smooth it out a little bit, kind of blending anything else that could be there. Now she obviously has dark, dark hair, so we want to make sure that there's a really gradual lightness um, and a really nice variance all the way down. So we'll take this foil, place it right on top, and again, this is also a foil from Framar. These are their pop-up foils, but I love it because it just makes a beautiful rose gold color, and of course your clients are going to love this versus just silver foils. I just think it's kind of fun. So we're just gonna lock that into place and we're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side of the head. All right, so what I did from where we left off was I did two diagonal backs to one straight across. So I did kind of that halo section just around the hairline and then I just continued up the head. So doing two diagonal back V sections to one straight across. So you guys can see this is my straight across section. Here's my diagonal backs and doing the exact same thing. So now that I've done a straight across one, I'm going to do another diagonal back. And you guys can see we're kind of getting to the top crown section of her head. So I'm going to kind of connect my front section to the back right here and we're gonna do just about three quarter of an inch thick about half an inch to three quarter of an inch thick section she does have a lot of hair and she has enough lightness so I'm not really too worried about um, putting in so much blonde but you guys can see so I'm gonna do my two oops, right there my two V sections right here and we're gonna do two of these guys and then one straight across and then I'll show you guys when we get to there. But let's, let's actually go through this section right here just as I'm catching you up. So you guys can see she still has so much depth through here. There's not a lot of brightness. So this is gonna be really fun to bring in a lot of this depth because like I said, a lot of the depth or a lot of the brightness was just on this top layer. So we still had a lot of uh, brightness to bring back in. So I'm gonna weave this one just like I did with the first section that I showed you guys. That's gonna end up being our low light piece. So we're gonna leave that out. And then we're gonna tease it. And I do like to kind of start midway down and kind of tease up here. Now sometimes what'll happen with some clients' hair, their teasing doesn't wanna stay. So it'll start to creep down. So what you can do is you can put a clip in the hair just to kind of keep the section nice and clean and then apply your lightener from here. So we'll grab our piece. Grab our blending agent. And one thing that I do love about the blending agent is I can take my hands away from this foil. It's not gonna slip. So it helps kind of hold, lock that foil into place. And so it keeps it a lot easier for me. It keeps it just so much um, easier as I'm kind of moving around, grabbing my lightener, all of that stuff. So you guys can see she does have a lot of thick, thick hair. So what we wanna make sure that we're doing is really making sure to get that product in there so that there's not any hollow spots on the inside because sometimes what can happen is there will be hollow spots internally. So we wanna make sure that this piece is really fully, fully saturated. And I'm using my hand as kind of my backboard and I'm pushing up against that product into my hand. 
Another thing that you guys will notice as we kind of go up her hair, she has kind of this hair down here where she has some lightness, but then a lot of it is dark. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna weave some of this out, her darker pieces. So now we've got these light pieces down here. We're gonna let those hang out. And I'm actually gonna pull this guy up and combine it with our 30 volume up in here so that this piece is getting fully lightened all the way through. And then we'll go through and tackle the end separately with our 10 volume. This is like weaving out her old low lights. You guys can see, getting it really, really in there, making sure to fully, fully saturate it. We'll take our 10 volume, just kind of touch these little ends down here. Nothing crazy. Back here with our 30 volume. And now that I fully saturated the rest of the piece, I'm gonna go up and do my feathering technique up into it. So I always like to do this last because I feel like this is the part that takes like the most um, finesse. And so I wouldn't wanna go through, do it first, and then have it move or something while I'm doing the rest of the hair. So I always like to do this little part last. So one thing that I do wanna make note of is during this part down here in the mid lengths and to the ends, I am pushing the product in. I'm definitely adding more force. But then when we get up to this piece up here, I'm doing a much softer, lighter touch when it comes to the feathering. I'm not pushing the product in. It's definitely more of a feathering kind of technique. So I am making sure to get it saturated, but I am doing more like surface painting through there. So just something I wanted to make note of. And then I will take my clean brush and just kind of smooth this out here. You guys can see having this clip up here really keeps it so that that teasing area isn't um, you know, creeping down in there. Then we're just gonna place a foil right on top and incubate it. I'm gonna do that on the other side over here and then I'll show you guys when we get up to this section. All right, so we did my two diagonal backs and now I'm just gonna do straight across all the way up her head because we're left with kind of this smaller section and I don't really necessarily need to do two diagonal backs and we end up with this tiny triangle. So I'm just gonna do straight across. So I'm gonna do our first one, kind of a triangle. And you guys might see that this is a thicker section, but I still want to leave some depth in her hair. She doesn't want to be platinum blonde or super crazy blonde. Obviously, if she did, we would be taking a lot less sections and I would be charging a lot of money for this because it would take me a while. But um, I'm going to do a deep weave on this one. So I am capturing hair from down here. So we're going to do kind of a deeper weave, just like that. But we still are leaving some depth in there. Also, when I tease the hair, you guys can see I'm gonna tease it. This will also help us keep some depth in there because we're not going super crazy. You know, we are gonna eliminate some of that hair. So um, it does help a lot and it definitely helps diffuse the lightener as well. So now we're just gonna place our foil after our blending agent. And I still am on 30 volume. Once we get around to the front of the hair, I will switch to probably 35. But the fun thing is I always like to check the hair um, in some of these lower foils just to see how it's processing. Sometimes it doesn't need to be bumped up, but because it's been sitting on for a while, we are gonna bump it up just to kind of catch it up to speed. So you guys can see I'm adding more product in this mid length area because she does have thick, thick hair right there. It is dark. I wanna make sure that it is really saturated. And then I'm gonna go through and kind of pull out some of these low lights. Now these pieces are definitely on the lighter side down here, but we just have some darker low lights. We'll just kind of touch those up right in here, kind of feathering this through. And then I will take my 10 volume still and just kind of touch it down here. The fun thing about this technique is you can really customize what kind of developers you're putting in there. If you wanted to do a low light instead, you could do something like that. So it allows you to really customize what you're doing because I have this whole surface to paint on and really get custom to what I'm doing with her hair. This is also gonna really ensure the health of her hair and integrity while we're working. Okay, so now, last but not least, I'm going to go back up and just kind of diffuse this line, blend it up in there. And this takes a feeling for sure. Like it definitely takes some time getting used to the pressure you put in, how you're doing your brush. So I would just recommend just keep playing around and figuring out what works for you. So now you guys can see that's pretty uh, solid right there. So I am just gonna take my little brush and just kind of blend this down through. Making sure to wipe it off real good in between. And then place my foil on top and let it incubate. So we're gonna continue up on this little section right here, and I'll show you guys the very last foil we do right here on the top of the head. All right, so we are gonna do this last section here on the top. She definitely has a lot of lightness in here already, so I'm not too concerned about this one. I am just gonna bring it up a little bit, so I'm really just gonna kinda of do kinda of the top layer here. I'm not really too worried about it, because I don't wanna 
make her super, super blonde. I'm actually gonna pull even a little bit more of this out. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the same thing like I did before, but I'm gonna make sure to really diffuse that teasing right there. So we did a lot of teasing, and again, I'm gonna clip that out of the way. It definitely helps, especially on sections where it can, it can bunch up really bad. So grab my foil. And this is the section that you really wanna pay attention to because here's the thing, this is gonna be the piece that lays over. And so if it's all chunky or there's lines in the hair, your client's gonna notice it, it's gonna show up in your Instagram photo, you definitely don't want this. So this is a really, really important piece. You wanna make sure that it's super, super blended and really diffused nicely. All right, so as I'm going through and kind of blending this up in there, I'm being really, really careful to make sure that it's blending while I'm placing the lightener on. I think sometimes when we have clients that have really thick hair, we just slap the lightener on there, hoping that it blends out and we get lazy. And so you definitely don't want to do this, especially with somebody with thicker hair, because it is going to show up and you will have problems. So even though you're teasing the hair, that's gonna help diffuse it, even though you're using the blending agent, you still wanna make sure that it's as blended as possible. I'm gonna go through, saturate our ends a little bit down here. Make sure everything is really saturated in there. Revolutionary France, listen to men like to go. I'm actually not even gonna lock the corners on this one because I don't want it to squish in there, so. All right, so now we finished our final back section. I'm gonna check some of these just to see how we're lightening. I'm gonna go remix some lightener and then we're gonna get to the front. All right, so I'm gonna go in and add her money piece. Now, one thing that I did notice was she parts her hair kind of off to the side and her money piece on this side is a little bit higher than it is on this side. And this is actually really common when people divide the balayage or foliage doing side by side. But there's a reason why I like to do these pieces combined so that we don't have that issue. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just kind of figure out, ask her where she parts her hair. She said she kind of parts it right there. And then I'm just gonna kind of take my section just about three quarters of an inch wide. And the cool thing is with this technique is you're customizing it to your client and what their hairline looks like because every client's got a little bit different of a hairline. You guys can see she's actually a little bit thinner on this side, which is no problem, but this allows me to customize it. So I actually want this to be just a little bit thinner on this side. So I'm just gonna take this, put this back away. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my section almost like I would a highlight. So I'm gonna take this guy and you guys can see there's lots of depth in here. And so I'm just gonna kind of weave it out. I'm gonna weave out some of those lighter pieces she does have. And we're not gonna actually tease this section. Um, because it's such a fine piece, you don't really need to tease it. And especially because we use our lightening agent or blending agent. So I'm just going to use my blending agent right here. And again, I can take my hands away from this foil. It's not gonna slip or anything. So another great reason of why to use that blending agent. Then I'm just gonna paint my lightener in right here trying to avoid the pieces that are already light. I'll actually just pull this guy out. Um, this is actually a Framar brush too. I love this brush because it has that tail comb so I can kind of be really precision with it or really precise with it. So I'm just gonna get up in here. And then I'm gonna go back in and I barely have any lightener on this brush at all and just kind of feather this up into this section into our blending agent. And then I'm just gonna literally fold this into thirds and lock it into place. I'm gonna do two more of these pieces and I'm gonna show you guys the front. All right, so I did three of those baby light type foils and now I'm just literally gonna take this teeny tiny foil. This is actually getting in some of her baby hairs that she has up here. Not the really, really short ones, but just a couple of these little guys up here. I do want this to be a little bit stronger around her face. So I am just grabbing this little tiny last foil. And doing these types of details on your clients is really gonna make a difference. They will notice the difference between you doing this one last foil and you not. Um, and this is what's gonna set you apart from other stylists. So this is just a kind of great little tip. Anytime you can add in a little detail like this for your client, it's gonna make a huge difference. They'll notice and I just promise you it will set you apart. 
Okay, and then one last thing I like to do because these little baby hairs are so annoying while the client is processing. So I always just like to get them away from the client's face and then we're gonna place these foils back down. But by getting them out of the client's face, it really helps them feel more comfortable while they're processing. So now we finished her little money piece section right here in the front and I'm gonna go through and do the sides and I'll show you guys what I'm doing. All right, so now we're gonna do the pieces on the side and you guys can see she's actually got quite a bit of baby hairs in here, but we pulled these baby hairs kind of we incorporated them into our money piece so I'm not too worried about this little section but we are going to want to tackle this section right here around the hairline so I'm going to just pull this piece down and this is going to be our first almost baby light highlight piece it's going to mimic what we did in these foils we're probably going to do two of these ones just to make sure that it is really good and you guys can see it's thinner here but that she's also got this thickness here so we do want to make sure that we're blending it in so that she doesn't have this like blonde chunk running back behind her hair, but also still having enough lightness around her face. So this is again, just going in and customizing it for your client and their hairline. So we'll do our little bit of blending agent. So you guys can see, I'm just kind of blending it up into our blending agent. Saying that word a lot in this video, I apologize. <laughs> and then I'm just gonna fold this foil into thirds like I would just a regular highlight. And with this next piece, I am gonna capture a little bit more kind of up in here. Now the key with these pieces is you do want to keep them closer to baby lights versus thicker highlights um, because the thinner it is, the better it's going to blend. So you guys can see I'm actually grabbing some of those baby hairs in here. Now if her baby hairs were a little bit shorter, I wouldn't even bother them because we wouldn't want to have like her fluffy baby hairs being lightened, but these ones are a little bit longer, so we are going to lighten them. Now I know sometimes this section can be a little bit tricky or sometimes feel awkward. So even if it feels a little awkward, just know that it feels awkward to me too. It does take a little bit of getting used to getting your hand placement down, how to hold the foil and stuff. So just keep practicing, it will get better, but it sometimes does just feel awkward in these positions. That's totally normal. And lock it into place. And now for the rest of her hair, I'm actually going to do diagonal back sections till we reach this top corner here. And we're gonna do them just the same way. Now this piece was a piece that we pulled up in our hairline, so we're gonna let that hang out down here. These are gonna be our foliage pieces. So these pieces, because they are a little bit thicker, we are gonna make sure to tease them. And sometimes hair can clump up like that, so I do wanna make sure that it is gonna be a nice surface for me to paint on. So if it is all clumped up, go ahead and just rearrange it before you grab your lightener and try to move it around with your lightener in there. It'll be a lot easier on you. So I'm gonna continue up the head, just doing diagonal backs till we reach that top little corner piece and finish up this section. So we finished her entire head. Just as a recap, we did two diagonal back sections to one straight across, and we did that all the way up her entire back section until we got to this crown area where we did three straight across. Of course, every piece we weaved, teased it, and then added our blending agent before we did the lightener. Then on the sides, we did our money piece in the front and then two diagonal backs and then all the way up into this tight final last corner. Now these pieces, sometimes I'll do a foil in here, but with her I wanna leave a little bit of depth. So what I'm gonna do is, right before we let the client walk off and process, I always like to check the last foil of the last section that we did, just to make sure that there's plenty of blend happening in there. So sometimes I'll even just take my brush, kind of move it around, make sure there's no hollow spots, and you guys can see it's already lifting beautifully. She has some beautiful virgin hair with some lightness already in there, so I'm not too worried about it. But if you ever see any kind of spottiness or something already happening here, you're gonna wanna go back and check your foils because if this foil is spotty and has issues, chances are you might have other foils that are spotty as well. So um, you shouldn't if you do the technique correctly, but you just wanna go back and check. So this is looking really beautifully. We're gonna go let her process for a little bit. I'm not gonna put her under heat because it's already looking good unless we need to just kind of warm it up for a little bit, but then we'll let her process.
All right, so I just finished rinsing her hair. I did do a little purple shampoo to kind of pre-tone, but what I did was I mixed up some Shades EQ, and this is gonna be our main toner. Sometimes if I do use purple shampoo, it's just to pre-tone a little bit, um, but I know that we're always gonna do a toner after that. So this, I mixed up 9GI, 9N, and 9P equal parts, and so I'm going to apply it starting at the bottom of her head. So go look up. Okay, so I'm gonna start applying it kind of at the area where it is the most warm. You guys can see that she's definitely got some warmth in here. Um, she was pretty dark to begin with, so I'm happy with how she lightened. But we're gonna start kind of in there, and then I'm just gonna keep kind of working on my way down. I am gonna leave her ends out just a little bit till I get towards the end of her processing because I don't want them to get too muddy. So I'm just gonna start applying kind of down here, and then we will work our way all the way up through the entire head and probably let this process from anywhere from about five to 10 minutes. All right, so we just finished blow drying her and have you ever had a moment when you're blow drying your client and maybe there's an area that's not totally blended but you're afraid to tell your client because you don't know how to fix it or you don't have time to take them back to the shampoo, retone and do all that. And so you just let them go home crossing your fingers hoping that they don't notice this little spot that maybe wasn't totally blended. It happens to all of us, especially on clients that have darker hair. There's a spot in her hair that I noticed when I was blow drying that wasn't quite the way that I wanted it to be. So I'm gonna share with you guys a quick little trick that you can do that takes maybe five to 10 minutes. And if you address it with your clients, you are still in control. The second that they say, hey, there's like something funky right here, or they have to come back, that takes you out of the driver's seat. And so it's actually really important to make sure that you're addressing things like this while they're in the chair, fixing it right then and there, and keeping it really simple. So all I'm gonna do is there's a little spot kind of right here to me. This is kind of me being OCD. It's sometimes hard to see in the light. It's a little bit spotty. So I'm just literally going to pick up kind of the area where I see it a little tiny bit spotty. Honestly, not even that bad. But I'm going to take a foil and I mixed up Shades EQ 5N in my little uh, mixing bowl. And so I'm just literally gonna blur it just right down like that. Just barely over that little spot that I feel like is a little spotty and fold it up. And then there was one other spot in this section as we parted her hair kind of more towards the middle that bothered me. So I'm just gonna do the exact same thing, put it in these two little foils, rinse it out in a towel, and then we should be good to go. All right, so now it's processed for just a few minutes. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this foil out and I'm just gonna use a spray bottle. And the reason why I like using Shades EQ is because you don't have to necessarily shampoo it out afterwards. So I'm just gonna make sure that I rinse it really good with a spray bottle um, and just kind of pull it through with this towel and then we'll just dry this little section that we just put it in. that just blended that little spotty piece out and now she has a beautiful blend and that took me maybe 10 extra minutes but it's so so worth it so your client doesn't go home unsatisfied with their color and here is our final result oh my gosh i love how it turned out we got so many beautiful blonde tones in there super blended and that tip where i shared with you guys just that last five minutes makes such a big difference so i hope that you guys try that out even if you have clients that don't necessarily have blended color that's a really quick way to fix it before they go home all right guys thank you so much for watching this video i hope that you learned something new and that you're gonna try out my new secret sauce with the acidic milk rinse from biolage it is amazing i love the way that it feels it helps with the detangling of the hair and i absolutely love how this method works with my signature foliage technique so if you guys recreate this look on your own make sure to tag me in your stories or if you're watching this video screenshot it, share it on your stories and tag me so that I can see that you're watching. I love connecting with those of you who are watching my videos and seeing the stuff that you recreate. If you haven't already said hi over on Instagram, come on over, send me a DM, say hi. I want to know what you loved about this video and a light bulb moment that you took away from it. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>